So From the Complaints of Poverty is a section of a longer poem called The Complaints of Poverty. That's why it says from the, at the top. So we're just looking at a section of the whole poem. But we're going to look into uh, themes and attitudes and ideas that go deeper into the whole uh, piece as well. So by the end of this, you should have a sense of what the whole poem's about, as well as this section that we're looking at as well. Sorry, I said as well twice there for some reason. <laughs> So we'll jump straight into the poem. You can try reading this poem aloud to yourself. Um, if you do that, you notice it's pretty long. I'm trying to get it on a single page. It's not really, not really working, is it? No. <laughs> um, it's quite long and it's very old fashioned. So it's the kind of poem that you can start reading it and just think, what on earth? I don't understand what's happening. Like what's splendid equipage, what's a gilded coach, you know, the imagery um, and the, the sort of tone in which it's written, chimeras all, you know, um, it's a little bit difficult to understand. So you can try reading it aloud to yourself and try and see if you can get some of the imagery, some of the ideas from it, but don't worry or stress too much if it doesn't make sense straight away. We're going to go a lot deeper into what it means as we go through. So as you read it as well, you can pause me, but there's a big list of vocabulary here um, that you want to look through. So that will help you understand what these words um, mean. A lot of them are just kind of archaisms, like old fashioned words that we don't use so much anymore. You'll notice that he's uh, deliberately using a high um, a highbrow register. So he's using words that are intentionally complex, quite academic, uh, very intellectual sounding. So yeah, you can pause me, read the poem, and then come back when you're ready. So here is a summary of the poem written in kind of the same voice as the poem itself. Um, this is written in more plain English, so it should help you understand in a lot more of a clear way what the poem's trying to say. So it's more modern and kind of stripped back. Um, it starts with some questions. Will poverty reach the rich? Do we, will we all know poverty's true self? We can only hope that the rich experience what the poor do. What can the poor fear? when we already live in detestable circumstances. Poverty starts with our children. People choose to ignore truths. So there's a lot of ideas to do with rich and poor and to do with how poverty develops, what poverty is. So we can see that this is a socio-political poem. It's talking about the um, you know wider mechanisms that society functions on. It's not about an individual, it's not a story, it's a lyric poem that's expressing an idea. So there's a sense, you know, justice cannot prevail when sin overtakes. Young girls' purity is taken by poverty. In these vulnerable years, if we learn, if reason guides us and we choose a virtuous way of living, only endless grueling work awaits us. So there's a sense that, you know, the choice for people in poverty is really not um not good like not an easy choice and there's a sense that from a young age people living in poverty are kind of trained into being poor and they're kind of conditioned that way they're expecting to always live a life that's poor they're not really able to help themselves so even if they um don't give in to sin or crime or you know other types of things that it would be easier to give into if you were poor, they still have to work. Um, they have endless grueling work. This lack of clothing and it's too hot in summer. So every season brings some kind of pain. Every time they have children, it creates more sadness because it's more suffering because their money has to stretch further. The children cry with hunger and cold in winter. There's a scarcity of food. So it's really drumming up a lot of um, 
pity for the suffering of the poor and also c constructing an argument where we realize that it's not poor people's fault themselves for being stuck in poverty that there's a lot of hardship and difficulty that oppresses them constantly and there's a lot of things they have to battle with daily just to survive so they don't have any chance to kind of improve their circumstances or educate themselves to be better they don't have any exposure to that type of world where it's possible so there's you know sickness um death where is the doctor old age in poverty slow sad tells his sad story with hollow cheeks a lengthy beard and frayed clothing of rags so final images of an old person you know if they're lucky enough to get to make it to old age um they're not they don't age gracefully they don't have a nice retirement they they keep suffering and struggling until the end of their lives so yeah drumming up a, a serious amount of pity for the plight of the poor um, you can see here there's a gin bottle and ice cream so there's pictures of um, the poor here so the man may or may not have experienced poverty himself he may be talking about it in an abstract way or he may be talking about it because he's had some personal experience of poverty but he definitely is talking about the theme of privilege he's talking about how the rich are um, not at all aware of how lucky they are and they're kind of blind to the, the type of lifestyle that the poor lead um, and despite their richness they do nothing to help the poor and if the situation were reversed he kind of asks at the beginning of the poem would rich people finally learn to empathize and understand and help the poor so it's about these social conditions that oppress the poor um, the structure of society is wrong and the kind of disparity between uh, the rich and their concerns and the poor and their concerns is just not doing anything to kind of heal or alleviate the suffering of those in poverty so it's meant to make us feel kind of like a little bit um, sort of sick and sad about the extreme and constant suffering that the poor have to endure. Uh, there's a huge, so as well as this kind of academic argument that's full of very eloquent, complex phrases, it might be a bit more clear why he uses such advanced language now. Um, there's also a lot of language techniques that he employs. So you can kind of have a look at these and the analysis of them in um, more detail here. I'm going to kind of whiz through them just so that we focus mostly on the core messages of the poem. And then once you've got the messages in your head, the, the imagery and the precise techniques are a lot easier to analyze. So feel free to go to the Scribbly page and download this document if you um, want a bit more help with that. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of techniques here. Didacticism is maybe one that's worth mentioning. So didacticism is when you have um, an intentional moral or message that you're trying to teach people through your work. Um, so we can call this a didactic poem. It's trying to teach us a lesson about poverty and, and wealth. So you might want to do this task, if, especially if you like creative things and they help you think about and respond to poetry. So you can write a speech, a monologue, just a short one from the perspective of someone living in poverty at the time. So, um, yeah, you might want to think about other things that you would compare and contrast with this poem as well. Um, personally, I think I would look at Dickens. So look at some extracts from Charles Dickens to do with um, people living in poverty, maybe a, a, you know, a section from A Christmas Carol. Uh, there's also quite a lot of texts, like Victorian texts, that you can find um, about the state of the poor. There's one called, like, the London... Oh, I can't quite remember it. London something and the London poor. But it's like a historical account of descriptions of poor people. It's very interesting um, where this man kind of basically goes and hangs out with loads of poor people in different jobs and makes a report on them and their lives and it's it's really vivid and detailed 
London something in the London poor. You probably, if you Google that, find it. Uh, but yeah, really interesting kind of historical uh, account. This poem, I don't think I actually wrote when it, um, the date when it's from, so please message me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Do look up the date. My guess is that it would be a 1700s poem, possibly an 1800s poem, um, but it's, it's definitely not modern, so either 17 or 1800s. It feels a little like a 1700s poem because they tend to be hyper-political and quite um, focused on you know that academic register, that, that highbrow register. Uh, so yeah, my guess would be 17 or 1800s. Sorry, normally I do write that down. Um, yeah, so rhyme scheme, you can see we've got this kind of rhyming couplets, A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Perhaps that's to show kind of love or affection for the poor. Um, it might just be to create a kind of um, clear sort of like, you know, very formal, rigid structure to the poem, again, because it's presented as a very well-researched and thought out and thoroughly constructed argument. Um, so it's a, it's a complaint poem. It's, um, you know, didactic. It's got this message behind it. So those types of things show that it's not just a kind of emotional response that's been quickly penned in the moment it's actually something that the poet has sat and thought about for a long time and taken the time to craft into a very rigid solid structure um so yeah we've kind of gone into didacticism already so we'll jump to the attitudes so yeah there's a sense that it's kind of unfair it's random who's born rich and who's born poor would probably most of us would agree with that whether you're rich or poor yourself if you've had any experience with poverty either directly or indirectly might be good to just kind of jot down a few notes about your experiences so that you can kind of apply your own beliefs about poverty um, to this situation. There's a range of different uh, opinions and beliefs about um, poverty and what it is to live in poverty. So it's quite an important thing to develop your own opinions on throughout your life as well. Um, I have lived in poverty. It was horrible. <laughs> I did for many years and it was, it was not nice. Um, so yeah, I've extreme empathy for those living in poverty and I'm very lucky that I don't live in poverty anymore and I think for the rest of my life I would be very appreciative of any day that I'm not you know <laughs> trying to find food to eat or sitting in bed with candles and not able to put the heating on it's not a nice way to live and um, there's relative poverty as well so I'd say that the poverty I personally experienced was very mild compared to what some people you know would have to experience um, especially when you look at the difference between the UK where I live and, and other countries um, as well so yeah we're all <laughs> we're all lucky in a sense even if we do we do struggle and we do um, experience moments of poverty um, but yeah being wealthy as well there's a difference between I think being guilty so it's, it's quite important. Uh, I think most people that I know, when I went to university, most people who were my friends were very rich and it was a very strange experience for me because I was not from that background. And um, being surrounded by rich people, the, most of them, I think, had a real guilt about um, poverty and poor people and felt really um, embarrassed that they were so privileged compared to how most people live and uh yeah i'd say if you if you're a rich person and you're you're listening to this it's really important to not um not be guilty i think about your wealth either because that makes you kind of a bit twisted and warped in your in your values so just appreciate if you're lucky enough to be born into a position where you have enough to live or you have a nice house or you have you know a comfortable lifestyle and do what you can to help other people in communities, um, especially like charity projects, that type of thing. Get involved in that type of stuff if you feel bad about it, but don't uh, spend your whole life feeling guilty. Um, a lot of my friends, bless them, they did things like, they lived like they were really poor, even though they were rich and they would work minimum wage jobs and really struggle 
I think just to sort of see what it felt like but it I think it's not really true to your nature and your background it's not really using um the tools that you've been given in life properly and uh it didn't really do them any favors I don't think so I would really recommend um if you are from a wealthy background to appreciate wealth if you're from a poor background to still appreciate whatever level of you know goodness you do have in your life and to try and find ways to work your work out of it uh, which is hard but but doable and yeah explore your own attitudes and perspectives um, to poverty because that will help you understand this poem in a, a deeper level so it's a sense from the writer that fortune is unfairly distributed and it's kind of random whether you're born rich or poor there's also a sense that the rich should do more for the poor, that it's um, impossible for people born in poverty to help themselves because of the constant struggle that they face. So instead of that, the, the rich have to kind of intervene. You can think about whether you think this is patronizing or not. Sometimes um, I think that that's a kind of, it could be a patronizing <laughs> thing for a rich person to be like, you poor poor person I'm gonna give you a bit of money to make your life better and then I feel better about it it's not really enough usually so I personally I think like entire systems have to be revised it's um it's something a bit more like governmental or structural to do with the society rather than like an individual rich person helping an individual poor person in one moment uh, I don't personally believe that does enough but the speaker here is saying that you know that that would help and that would make a big difference so you can think about your own beliefs on that as well so yeah definitely this is quite a balanced attitude there's a stigma about being rich and poor there's both sides of the coin have issues and problems um with them and we have to kind of be aware of the positives and negatives of uh, both sides so there's these kind of stigmas, these associations we have with rich and poor, um, both of which can be damaging. So the themes are very universal themes about society as a whole. So just be careful when you analyze this to understand it's a kind of general comment on the state of affairs rather than an individual. And you might want to try these revision questions to go a little bit deeper into the poem. Usually, like I say, I do put a context section into the analysis and for some reason there's just no context section here. So look up the date of the poem, a little bit about the guy who wrote it, a little bit about the background of the poem and then um, compare and contrast, you know, your own beliefs contemporarily from your point of view as a modern person with the time that the poem was written. And when you're ready, um, you can try this essay question as well. So yeah, hopefully that helped you a little bit with the poem. You're feeling a lot more confident with the ideas. And if you need any more help or you want to download this as a document, you can go to scribbly.com as well. So yeah, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you guys soon.